My name is Mark Lester and I'm Global Head of Education Partnerships for FutureLearn. Today I want to share with you FutureLearn's perspective on massive open online courses and in particular the pedagogical approach we have embraced around social learning and how our university partners are thinking about the opportunities social learning MOOCs afford. MOOCs are born out of the Open Educational Resource Movement, which started with the likes of Wikipedia, MIT's OpenCourseWare, the Open University's Open Learn Initiative, and later the arrival of iTunes U. CMOOCs then came along to enable groups of learners to share resources during a voyage of personal discovery in a given discipline. This was then followed by the XMOOCs of Udacity, Coursera, and edX, that all had a strong leaning towards instructionist pedagogy and mastery learning. However, the Open University has been a pioneer of supported distance learning for over 40 years with a record of training millions of people in that time. It has embraced a pedagogy based on social constructivism, what we call social learning in future learn. The innovation is how to deploy that proven pedagogy used on a smaller scale in a massive course and harness the power of the crowd to improve learning. At FutureLearn, we are working on developing a pedagogy of the massive. We see massive courses not simply as a way to bring scaffolded academic content to a huge body of people to improve access, but as a way to unlock the incredible knowledge and expertise of learners to improve the experience and then the course itself. We then want to help our university partners to deploy that on campus, moving beyond flipped classroom practice and into a realm where registered students and MOOC learners interact to deepen the learning experience on campus in ways previously unavailable and unimaginable. When we started, FutureLearn set out to build a social learning platform of supreme quality in all aspects. We've created a fantastic user experience and we brought in the best people from broadcast media and internet businesses to devise that experience. We've put in place an innovative pedagogy that combines the open university's expertise and the best of the social web. And we've been produced with our partners high quality courses that build upon the best of the web. We didn't reinvent tools that already exist, but rather to try to integrate them seamlessly into the experience on our platform. And we've made sure that all of this is enjoyable on desktops, tablets and smartphones. The exciting part about MOOCs for us is their potential to drive a new form of social learning. It's not a new approach. It's been around since the 70s and has long been championed by the Open University. At its core, this approach recognises that in any learning environment, a huge part of the educational experience comes from interaction between students. In physical universities, this has always been an implicit part of the process. But in distance learning, it's something you need to consciously construct and is even more important as one of the biggest barriers to distance learning is loneliness. Our aim is to create rich conversations among engaged learners and we have drawn significantly on conversational learning theory and other theories of social constructivism to produce high quality conversations. The most visible manifestation of this is how we decided to handle discussion. Rather than a separate forum, we place conversation next to the content. The result has been to allow tutors, mentors and learners to engage in a focused discussion on a given topic, facilitating that water cooler conversation just after you've been introduced to new information or ideas, when you have burning questions and want other learners to share their opinions and perspectives. This method has been far superior to traditional forums where threads can easily go off on tangents unrelated to the original content. 
And with such an erudite learner base, the conversations can often be far more enlightening than the original academic material. Dwell times per session can be as long as two and a quarter hours, with the majority of that time spent reading or engaging with the comments of other learners. And some of the knowledge sharing I've seen on courses I've taken has been profound. I mean, I remember the Ebola course from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, where literally dozens of medics and others on the ground came together to discuss the challenges in Sierra Leone and other areas affected by the outbreak. It instantly turned theory into practice in a way no academic could be expected to achieve in a free course. But we made other decisions on the platform to help learners engage in better conversation. Besides allowing people to reply in an elegant way, we've introduced liking so learners can find the most stimulating conversations being engaged with other learners. We introduce following so that learners can find people they learn from the most and build a social learning group on the course. We've introduced filtering so that learners can find the people and conversations where they're already engaged in more conversation as easily as possible. And finally, we built into the platform formative assessment and visible learning. We provide assessments with immediate feedback, with links back into the course. We feel this formative assessment experience is much more valuable for learning than being given a simple score on a test. We have structured our courses as a linear progression, organised around weeks, with each week having clear learning outcomes. This makes courses easy to navigate, but the additional power of having a linear structure is that it aids storytelling. Future Learn is strongly anchored in the broadcast media sector and we place great emphasis on digital storytelling. When this is done well, as it was on a course on forensic science by Strathclyde University, which taught forensics via a murder mystery, the learning outcomes were fantastic, driven by incredible engagement among the learners. And finally, we provide visible celebration of success in the progress page where learners can see how well they're doing and also in terms of their progress compared to others, but also in their terms of their tests. And our efforts will not stop there. This is really only the beginning. We see a pedagogy of the massive as the primary research focus for future learn. And to this end, we want to see how we can enhance following as a function to build social learning networks across courses, not just within them how we can enable mentors to support large groups more effectively, how to bring smaller groups together for short times to engage in common activities and to further de develop the already effective peer review system we have and deploy a new peer assessment method. The impact of our social learning approach has quite literally blown us away. The chart here will show some of the impacts that social learning can have on course participation and engagement in discussion. Firstly, what we see is that of all those people who have joined our courses, 53% will turn up on day one, which is about normal for many MOOCs, although we think the average can be improved. But of those people who turn up on day one, nearly a quarter will complete the course. And by that we mean they do the majority of the steps on the course and they, do, and they complete all of the tests that were set. For many courses, this figure far exceeds 40%. What is most gratifying is that fully 40% of learners are posting comments on courses with an average of seven comments per learner. This is a level of engagement far in advance of other learning systems and what gives future learn courses their true distinctiveness. Our success is mirrored in the fact that we've attracted with limited resource 2 million learners in under two years. And these learners have taken nearly 200 courses which have produced 4 million course signups for our university partners, roughly therefore taking two courses per learner. 
But our approach is valued beyond just the UK. It is, it is welcomed across the world. And what makes it so powerful is to see the knowledge sharing and debate from this hugely international learner base. It also has tremendous impact on our academics who can see their ideas being debated and discussed by an intelligent international audience with very different views and perspectives on the problems. A quite striking feature as well is, our, is the female bias of our learners compared to other platforms. This reflects the fact that FutureLearn and our partnership value diversity in our courses and we have a strong interest in the arts and other discursive subjects besides professional learning. As such, the platform has appealed to a significant female population. But like other platforms, we do have a highly educated learner base who are taking courses for professional development and career enhancement. And our approach is resonating strongly in the UK. And this is reflected in the membership where most of the top British universities have joined FutureLearn. It's not only in the UK that we appeal. We are seeing now 21 university partners across Europe, Australia, Korea, China, Africa, and Latin America, who value the pedagogical distinctiveness of the platform and the way we operate our partnership. We are now also seeing other specialist universities and institutions, such as the European Space Agency, joining us to develop massive social learning experiences. And now FutureLearn is welcoming individual faculties and research institutes within universities to join and develop courses in areas where they are world-class. But let me now turn to how FutureLearn and its partners are seeing the development of social learning MOOCs. We are seeing a range of innovations among our partners, which we know are present elsewhere. Firstly, we see our partners using MOOCs to enhance the core business. They're using MOOCs as resources, to provide pathways into paid programs, to showcase their research, and they're now beginning to look at awarding academic credit. Although the push to credit is certainly not as pronounced as in the US, reflecting the different national contexts for higher education. Instead of thinking about giving out MOOCs credit, universities are exploring the potential to enter the corporate training and lifelong learning markets, and then create soft credentials that increase the value of those courses to learners. Some universities are thinking about partial unbundling of some of their higher education offers, particularly drawing upon the MOOCs of their fellow partners, but these are only just beginning to take shape. MOOCs are being considered as a powerful resource for campus-based teaching. For many of our universities, the real goal of MOOCs is to transform the teaching and learning experience on their campus courses. So universities are using courses to implement flipped classroom practice, enrich their existing courses, replace existing course materials, bring in new case studies and perspectives, and to support independent study skills for their students. But the social aspect of FutureLearn's courses is what makes them highly attractive in this regard. Their value is magnified beyond seeing them as a new form of textbook or a time-saving device for academics. Let me give you an example. The University of Aberdeen has used its course on sustainable development with its first and second year undergraduate students. They have timed the MOOC to begin at the start of the academic year so that their own students can join it at the beginning, even though the university can use this course on FutureLearn just for their own students at no cost. The reason they're doing this is not just to free up the academic's time, but to take advantage of the richness of conversation that the course will generate and to be able to discuss those conversations at greater depth in seminars. 
As one university has said of its courses, there is simply no way they could recreate the degree of conversation taking place on the MOOC in their traditional postgraduate and undergraduate courses. So rather than use their MOOC privately, they prefer to use it openly to take advantage of those discussions outside of the university context. One of the most interesting aspects of free open courses for our universities is the opportunity to recruit new students in an increasingly international market. We've been working with our partners to optimise recruitment from their free courses at every stage, from maximising visitors to the course page and their branded content, devising the right pathways and products to land people on, and helping them convert learners into registered fee-paying students. To this end, we have provided partners with functionality and services so that their courses act as a powerful device for students to discover, sample and potentially join undergraduate and postgraduate courses offered by them, either delivered on campus or online. And over the next few years, we expect that the MOOC space will evolve to be a valuable recruiting bound for international students. As an example, we ran a free open course put together by the University of Southampton and the British Council on English language teaching. They had recently launched a new online masters in English language teaching, and this MOOC was a showcase for that qualification. To entice people in, they offered scholarships, and to be eligible, you needed to demonstrate you completed the MOOC. FutureLearn then created a structured recruitment funnel through the course with clear calls to action so that learners could register interest in that specific master's programme. The impact was tremendous, and on a single run of the course generated several thousand inquiries from learners requesting that the university get in touch to discuss that program. The recruitment onto it was significant, and the majority of those who have joined had completed the MOOC. Besides recruitment, MOOCs are being used to promote research excellence and demonstrate impact. While all of our universities are among the top 1% in the world, according to respective league tables, many still find there is a lack of awareness among many other higher education institutions about the research and areas of expertise. This can have an impact on their prospects and league tables, given that those tables are significantly weighted according to surveys of other academics. But in addition, in the UK, the Research Excellence Framework, which evaluates the research strength of UK universities, they're placing much greater emphasis on the impact of research. They want to see evidence that research has been diffused and made a difference in society. A MOOC offers one clear way of doing that, with its ability to reach tens of thousands of people with an interest or active in that field. But where universities and future learn are seeing tremendous opportunity is in the corporate training and workplace learning market. There is no question that social learning is a hot topic in the corporate training world, and the idea of having high quality courses accessible on mobile, produced by world class universities, and delivered on a platform that facilitates fantastic dialogue and knowledge sharing globally is an attractive proposition. The market for corporate training was $310 billion in 2013, according to one market research report. And for the first time, a far greater share of this market is open to our university partners. And we've already seen partners able to win corporate clients and attract sponsorship for their courses. The British government sponsored the cybersecurity course from the Open University. The NHS has been a big customer of the Medicines Adherence course from King's College London. Marks & Spencer's, a top UK retailer, has provided funding and unique access to their archives to Leeds University to support an innovation course focused on the retail sector. And the accountancy body, the ACCA, has worked with Exeter University to produce the first MOOC that exempted individuals who passed the exam from their first professional exam papers. The ACCA and Marks and Spencer's examples 
have demonstrated the power of such recognition to drive participation in courses. Future Learning and its partners, therefore, see great potential in new soft credentials rather than immediately jumping to credit-bearing courses. In future, we see more and more professional bodies, companies and national organisations working with us to address some of the largest national and international skills challenges. And FutureLearn aims to ensure its partners are at the heart of those opportunities and can leverage them to the full to both transform the learning experience and enrich their core business. Thank you all very much for your kind attention.